Gary Salo, Gold Motor Canada. So I'm pretty torn between which bike to convert to Magic Pi 5, and I believe it's going to be this one uh, because we have a old Magic Pi 2 on the front, or actually no, it's a Magic Pi 3 on the front. But uh, I only have so many bikes. This motor works fine, but uh, in the interest of moving up with the times, I have to convert one of my bikes to Magic Pi 5. I don't do the back wheel on this bike because it only has a 100 millimeter dropout on the back. Uh, it's supposed to be 135 for for bikes uh, on the rear. Pretty much every standard bike out there is 135 millimeter width on the rear and 100 on the front. So I'm going to leave that wheel as it is and change the front. I have this uh, crazy battery hanging off the handle off the main bar here. Uh, I put a thud sense uh, thud buster under here. And this is like a, a suspension for your seat, which is really quite awesome how it works. But anyway, with that, I was unable to put the rack on the back anymore. So I'm going to have to come up with another solution for a battery. I temporarily hung it from the frame here. And, uh, you know, we have the cycle analyst on here. I've had this bike for quite a few years and a light. So basically, I'm just going to strip everything right off of it. And I'm going to put a Magic Pie 5 on the front. So we'll see how that goes. Something else I should mention is I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put a pedelec on here. I don't believe I have a tool for this, but I, maybe I'll give it a shot anyway. We'll see how that goes. But in Canada, we're not required to have a pedelec. So uh, possibly I'll do it, but maybe not in this video. Okay, so now I've stripped pretty much everything off the bike. I've pulled off all the wiring, you know, the cycle analyst. I've taken the hand grips off, the brake levers, the gear shifters, everything. And the gear shifter I actually took off the last time I built this bike. Uh, this is normally a three-speed bike and it has a little chain that comes out of the side. Yes, it would normally come out of here. Yeah, it's one side or the other. Oh, here it is. The chain normally comes out of here and it's a three-speed rear end, but I don't need the gears, uh, you know. Uh, the electric bike, one gear is good. Okay, I've got the Magic Pi 5 out of the box here now, and uh, of course, you know, brand new, looks awesome. And uh, on here there's the pedelec cable. Uh, I'm probably not going to use a pedelec on this bike, but anyway, I'm just going to tape it up and attach it to the cable afterwards. And uh, inside here I have the controls and all the wires that come with it and even a really long extension wire here for the lighting which i probably am going to use so uh, this is what we start with and now the next thing, the next step for sure is to take that wheel off and uh, take the tire off of it and then mount the tire on this wheel okay, so now i've got the original wheel off and there's the new wheel i'm just going to transfer the tire over and at this point i should mention that this really is no different than removing the regular bicycle wheel that would be on your bike. This is the original bicycle wheel that was on this chopper. So way back when, this wheel used to be in there and I took it off, took the tire off of it and mounted it on my wheel. This is the tire here. And now I'm transferring the tire from that wheel over to this one. So obviously the first thing you want to do is let the air out of the tire, which I did out of the valve here. You know, uh, pretty basic stuff. You just push in the valve, let out the air, and uh, the tire is soft now. And when we were kids, we used to just go at this with a screwdriver and pry the rubber right off. And then we pinched a lot of rims. And now they have stuff like tire tools, right? So you can actually get that in there and you can pull the tire off. You get a couple of them going, work it around, and you don't ruin the tire tube. I should also mention while I have the tire off, I've cleaned it up a little bit so I don't get my hands so dirty and it looks better. But the tube, this is a great time to replace the tube that comes with your department store bike. Because normally they are the thinnest piece of, well, they are the thinnest rubber you could imagine. I get these tubes from a local department store in Canada called Canadian Tire. And these are gel filled tubes. Uh, there's some sort of liquid in there. And if it gets a leak, it's self-sealing, and the rubber is also really, really thick. Like if you were to put these, this tube and a normal tube on a scale beside each other, this would probably weigh five times more than the regular tube. 
it comes in a box five times bigger that's for sure anyway a good quality tube will last you for years i've had this tube on this tire on that old chopper there for at least three years anyway i don't know maybe maybe even more no issues with a good tube also if you look at the length of the valve stem on most normal tubes and the thickness of the rim it's double walled it's quite a ways to go for the valve to reach and come out the hole there and then when you go to fill it it falls back in the hole so one thing i use a lot i get these also a canadian tire is a valve extender and a lot of people use these for their, their you find these in the automotive department and people screw them on the valves of their car uh, when they have like big mag wheels on it or something and you can't reach the valve anymore so this extends it but the good thing about this is it also doesn't fit in the hole of the rim so when you put the valve through and you screw this on everything's tight i'll show you in a second what it looks like okay now i've got the valve sticking through the rim and when i go to put the extender on i can see i'll thread it right down if you tried to fill it up without this on there that would just push back into the rim on you so when you screw on the valve extender okay threads right on put it nice and tight you can now fill it through here and the tube will not recede back into the rim I usually have these on every bike I have. So now the tube is on, it's still deflated. You can see in here, there's a little line there, which goes all the way around the rim, all the way around the tire. And the idea is to get the tire to sit properly with that lined up the same distance from the rim all the way around. Then your tire will be on nice and straight. So I'm gonna keep checking that and I'll air it up. Okay, so now the tire is on and it's aired up and I've got that line evenly spaced all the way around the rim and uh, so the tire is on nice and straight. Now at this point a lot of people take the plastic shrink wrap off the, off the wheel. Uh, I wouldn't do that yet because you're going to be putting the wheel on, you're going to be using tools and why, why uh, risk scratching it? That's what it's there for. So just peel it off when you're done. Okay so I've got the bike upside down here and I laid it on a piece of carpet because you know there's no need to scratch things up and it's time to put on the wheel. Now a lot of people ask this question, uh, which side of the bike do I which way do I put the wheel in the bike? Well, the uh, free wheel always goes on the opposite side of the cable because this is where the disc brake mounts. So that would be for all of the motors we have except for the 902. The 902, the cable does come out through the free wheel. But any other motor, the cable comes out the opposite side of where the chain is on your bike to accommodate the disc brake. Now you can see on this bike here, there's a disc brake on it. The brake disc is here and here's the brake activator or caliper and the caliper is mounted onto two mounts that are attached to the fork of this bike a lot of people think they could just add a brake disc to their bike well you have to have these mounts if you don't have these mounts you can't do it uh, you can get them added on which is what i'm going to do with this bike so i'm going to put the disc brake on now and i'm going to get mounts added to the bike and put the caliper on later if you know someone that is a welder a professional shop this is quite easily done about to put the disc brake on the wheel and as you can see I had to feed all the wires through it before I slide it onto the axle. So now the disc is ready to go on. You can see I'm using a 180 on this. Uh, the disc is also designed to spin in a certain direction. It has an arrow on it in the way that it would be spinning normally on the bike. And normally with the arrow facing you when you put it on the bike is correct. But you should try to figure out the orientation of the bike just to make sure. And another thing uh, people mess up quite often is, with is the screws that come with it. You have to use the screws that come with our brake discs because if you put screws into the housing here that are too long, the screws end up going through the hole and rubbing on the controller on the inside as the wheel spins. So you got to make sure that you use nice short screws, the ones that come with our discs. I'm not exactly sure of the length but it looks like about 5 16 of an inch. Okay I think that's a clear enough shot. You can see there's a washer inside then the fork of the bike and then the tabbed washer that fits in the slot and then the nut and afterwards when I get it tightened down I'm going to run the cabling around and put it around like this all right so I create a drip loop remember this bike is upside down but any rain that comes down the cable from the top will drip to the ground instead of going towards the motor I also mentioned that all wheels especially front ones should have a torque arm and here's a torque arm here and what it does it attaches to the bike and it has a right angle to the axle and the torque arm actually fits right over the axle and keeps it in place so that the wheel does not slide or move or rock 
uh, eventually what happens is the axle rocks in these dropouts here and the wheel becomes loose, the nut can become loose and you can lose the wheel. So you really should have torque arms. I'm going to put one on each side. So with the previous wheel, this is the way I had the torque arm mounted. I think I'm going to do it differently this time. I'm going to take the torque arm and I'm going to put it on the wheel like that. All right, and it'll reach over the bottom here. Okay, and uh, I'll take the, the bottom piece here and this piece here will fit up under here and it'll go up and it'll tie right into there and I'll need to put hose clamps around the fork right here instead of up there. I'm not really sure. I did it that way last time so I wouldn't have to put hose clamps on the fork but I'm not sure I like the way they look there either so I'll have to decide. I'm also comparing how the rear one fits on and it goes up like that or down like that. Okay that is doable and with the piece that goes on the rear one we have here okay let's slide up it looks like i can put the bolt to hold them together right there and it looks like i'm going to use rear ones on the front wheel this seems to be a better way to go because i can put the hose clamps through here and it won't be interfering with this plate that's back here so that's probably what i'm going to do put rear ones on the front wheel Okay, but the issue with putting the torque arm around the fork itself is the fork is so wide, this won't fit. It'll, it fits over this now, but to tie in the other piece along here, it won't be long enough. So I'll have to pick up another uh, stainless steel hose clamp at a department store or a plumbing store. Something a little bigger to fit over that. And I'm going to get it in stainless steel so it doesn't rust, of course. Now I've just come to realize that if I put the torque arm right up against the washer there that there is no room behind it for the nut. So I need to have this out a bit, like here, to have it more centered on the tube, maybe even a little more, something like that. And then put the nut on the outside. There's still plenty of space here for the nut. As long as you can still see the black part at the top of the nut, you'll be okay. Uh, this is an unusual situation. You probably won't have to do this on your bike Just that this is an odd bike, but here's some spacer washers I'm going to use to put in there just to make that gap Okay, so I've got the spacer in behind there now and now the nut is on you can see there's space in there And I've got the other part of the torque arm on and this is basically how it's going to mount on there So this will keep the front wheel from rocking in the dropouts up here Plus, with it bolted down like that, there's never any possibility the wheel could slide out. It'll be held firmly in place. And this is for safety, and everyone should do this. Okay, so I did manage to find a couple of hose clamps that were long enough. I got one on each side. I'll put more after. But I do have the torque arm mounted now, and it's under here. And I just wanted to show you something in here. When you spin the wheel, you can see that it's rubbing on the cable. And eventually it'll just wear its way right through the cable. That's because that this is an unusual bike. It has really large surface area here and that. So I'm just going to pull the cable through here and zip tie it right down to here. And then it'll no longer rub on those heads of the brake disc when it spins. Okay, so now I have a, disc, uh, a zip tie on it right there. Right here, and you can see that it's holding the cable down through the gap there. And now when the heads turn, none of them rub on the cable. So we're good now. Now you probably won't have this issue on your bike because my bike is quite different here, but you should have a look at it anyway. Okay, so now I've got the wheel on and the bike's right side up again. Uh, looks pretty awesome in my mind. So I've got the torque arms on there. Everybody should have those, especially on a front wheel. And I've got the cabling running up the inside of the fork here. And uh, we're good to go with all of that. Everything's securely tied into place. This is the pedelec cable. I just tucked that in behind in here where you really can't see it. I'll have to tape it up after to waterproof it. But uh, the wheel is on and we're ready for the handlebar controls. So now we've got this uh, box of goodies here to go onto the handlebars. And I never did touch up the paint on them like I said I was going to. I thought maybe I would just do it after. 
So uh, I've always used a twist throttle on this bike because I like that motorcycle feel. Every other bike I have, I use a thumb throttle, but in this case, I'm gonna swap that for a twist. So because of numerous complaints over the years of people saying the wires are too short on the kits, well, this is where we're at now. This is how much extra wire I have here. So it's way too long for my situation. So I'm probably just gonna coil it up neatly and zip tie it right underneath here. Okay, so I've got my hand grip back on. I used the one from before because I have a hole in the end of it for the mirror. And I do want the mirror on there. So uh, everybody should have a mirror on the left side of their bike or you're in danger. Uh, here are the cruise control button and the horn button if I elect to use the horn. And uh, I put the brake lever on. Uh, this bike is only going to have one brake lever because the back wheel is actually a coaster brake. So I don't need the other brake lever. So the wires are nicely zip tied onto the frame. I have to cut the strap shorter now, of course. And from the other side, I have the throttle and it's zip tied all the way down. All right, and uh, the wires end here. And now I have to put the wire harness in between here and here. So if the wire harness was only six inches long, it would be perfect for me, but it's quite a bit longer. So I'm going to, as I said, zip tie it up and hide, hide it in here as much as possible. Okay, so now I've zip tied the, all the wires up in a bundle underneath here, so it's not a great solution, but it's not bad. And I've neatly zip tied them all to the frame. i still got some zip ties to cut off. So the only thing left now, oh well here we go, here's the light, plug for the light. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the gold motor light, but the plug is here. And there's also a really long connection to the back light, which you can run all the way to the back of the bike. It's so long I'll probably run it under the frame all the way because I do have these little things here for putting the wire in along the way where the gear shifter used to be before I took it off. So whether I use gold motor lights or not, I will probably use this wire. And if you don't want to use this, you can just cut this off, separate the wires and insulate them so they don't get wet and then you won't have this wire. Or you can wind it up and put it in a pouch or underneath there, zip tied up like I maybe could have here. So that wire coil I showed you for the lights, I wound that up and zip tied it under here too, just for temporary. I'd like to give this bike a test run today. I'll get to those lights later. Okay, it's getting late in the day and I do want to get out for a ride, so I just wound these two wires together with household morettes. And I put a standard battery cable on the end. And I'm going to hook up the battery that was hanging in the inside. I'm going to hang it again. And I'm going to go for a ride. Okay, now I've got the battery hanging in there again and it's plugged in we have lights on the throttle and if i turn the throttle the wheel goes so we're, we're good to go okay so i went for a ride and uh, as expected it was totally awesome i didn't shoot any video of it but uh, i will anyway i just want to show you something else now i've plugged the bluetooth device into it you can see it dangling there and i've got the app okay so i'm going to go into the golden motor app Oops, it shut down on me. Not real familiar with these Android devices. I don't have one myself. But you can see that the Android device connected right, right away. Uh, the blue light is on down there and we're connected it into the app. And the way that I did that was I just pushed here. It was red before for Bluetooth. It goes up here to the device. And uh, well, you can see when the device is on, you click the search in the top right corner and the device will show up. And then you can see the blue light in the background there. As you touch this, you can turn it on and off. So you can see the blue lights coming on and off. So I have the device on. So this is with a Samsung Galaxy 3 with Android 4.4 on it. So we have 53.8 volts. That's the current state of the battery. I'm just going to see if I can uh, do this here. Okay, so I got the wheel off the ground sort of. And as it spins up, you can see the speed is increasing on the speedometer on the app. And you can see the current is fluctuating there. Uh, the revolutions are up to 428 RPM. Uh, in the bottom left corner, it says that it's at uh, 0.1 of a kilometer. So everything is working nicely, 0.2 of a kilometer. And if I let go of the throttle and pull the brake, it stops almost completely right away, okay? And the reason I did that is I'm just going to show you that you can go into the app and you can change all the settings here. So what I'm going to change is the brake. Unfortunately, nothing is written in English here. So 
Hopefully that will improve. There's a little EBS over there for electric brake system and I just shut it off. Now you would think that it's off actually, but you really got to go down here and you got to hit that and ask. it's asking if you want to save the settings and yes you do. Okay, so hopefully I did that correctly and now I'll go back into the app. Okay, and I'll power up. Okay, everything's spinning nicely. Okay, and I let go of the throttle and I pull the brake lever. The wheel still keeps spinning. The brake lever's not doing anything. See, I changed the programming with the phone wirelessly. So now I'm going to go back into the settings. I go back to EBS braking. I'm going to put the brake back on. I'm going to say OK. And then you have to go down here and hit this one to save it. And it says, would you like to save it? Yes. Okay, so now it's saved with the brake on again. So if I push here, go back into the program. And now I'm gonna spin the wheel up again. Okay, so the wheel is spinning up. Okay, I let go of the throttle, it's still spinning. Oops, I dragged down the ground there. Let me try that again. See if I sat on it. This is kind of difficult. Okay, so I have it spinning. Okay, so I'm going to let go of the throttle and pull the brake and the wheel stops right away. So the EBS braking is back on. So as you can see, everything's programmable through the app and uh, it looks like it's really uh, going to be exciting. Okay, so today I elected to do a little more work on the bike. I put the drip loop here I was talking about and I ran the cable right up inside the tube. I didn't like the way the wires looked on the tubes here all the time on the forks. so. I ran the wiring right up to the top here and now it's actually up here it comes out the top of the tube same with the battery wires and I tucked a nice little bundle of wires under here and a nice clean look you'll see it in my uh, test ride video but uh, things are awesome the uh, magic Pi vector is now installed and uh, we're ready for test rides so I hope you enjoyed the video it's Gary Salo Gold Motor Canada